I'm Londa Rolfing. My passion is teaching creative sewing. I do that at my blog, my YouTube channel, in my patterns, and now at my home studio in Jackson, Tennessee. We all wear knits, and if you sew knits, which I hope you do, you want to come up with some really good techniques that give your knits a professional look. So I'm going to share those techniques that I use with you here today. One of the first things we're all used to is elastic in our waistbands. Usually, um, we just make a casing and put the elastic through with a safety pin or a bodkin. I think that's kind of a home sewn look. Instead, I'm gonna show you a different way. First of all, when you put the elastic through, you have to join it. And generally, we have lapped the elastic, but that makes a bump. Instead, I think you would prefer it if you simply took those ends of the elastic, butted them together, and stitched them on a piece of fabric. Then after you're done, all you need to do is trim that excess fabric away. That makes a much less bulky joining. And here's how I like to put elastic in my skirts and pants instead of with this technique. All you need to do is allow 3 quarters of inch extra, take a 1 quarter inch seam, placing the elastic on the outside of the garment, and then what happens is that it turns in like this. It will stay in. All you need to do is stitch through the ditch at the side seams and at the center back. And this way you can see where the center back is because you can see where you butted it together. Another thing that you need to do is create clean finishes. Look at this nice, snappy, clean finish on this knit top. I do that with clear elastic, but there's a real important thing about clear elastic. If your clear elastic can rip like this, it's rotten. What's happened is that light has gotten to that elastic, so you always want to store it in a drawer away from the light. This is what your clear elastic should look like, nice and stretchy. And how I put it on is that I put it in the seam allowance on the wrong side of the garment with a big fat zigzag. But you need to pull it just ever so slightly. On this sample, it's just laid in a one-to-one -one ratio, so that's not really going to accomplish much. On this sample, I pulled it far too much. Do you see the puckers? This is about how much pull you want it to have, just a little bit of pull. Then it will turn in and you will either cover him or to a needle stitch from the right side, and it's just a really cool finish, so give that a try. The other thing about knits is that they're bulky, and that's true even of regular fabrics. We very rarely press our seam allowances open anymore, so just stop and think about it. Look here at this jeans hem. If you turn this up, you would have two layers versus six layers of bulk. All you need to do is simply trim into the seam allowance, throw the seam allowance the opposite directions, and then when you turn it up, you have three layers and three layers. So think about that when you do necklines and armholes on your knit garments. On this sample here, do you see that I've clipped into the shoulder seam, both at the arm and the neck? So then when the clear elastic is applied, it will be not bulky. So give those techniques a try. And then there's the hems of our garments. This is what I call the dreaded diagonal drag. You do not want your hems to look like that. The first thing you need to do is to remember that you need to give some stabilization that's still stretchy to your hem allowances on your knits. What I like to use is strips of cross grain cut knit fusible interfacing. Once again, do you see what I've done here in the hem allowance? I've clipped into the seam and thrown that the opposite direction. You can stick up your hems if you simply apply that fusible interfacing with the sticky side up. Surge it on, and then when you turn it over and press, then it will be stuck into place. Then you could do your stitching. There's also um, hiding on our wonderful machines these days, really long basting stitches. So consider this. Turn up your hem after it's interfaced, and then stitch right through the middle of it and then stitch again with that basting stitch right along the very edge. That way it's all in place and it can't scooch when you're stitching from the right hand side. That also helps give you the exact placement for your cover hem. Do you see I can really get that line of the cover hem right through the double layers because it's marked with the basting stitch. I do a lot of twin needle stitching, so I have done all this, then my twin needle stitching, but if you haven't located that exactly at the edge, you have this extra inside. So what you want to do is be very, very careful as you trim away that extra. I used to trim it like this, 
but then you could cut a hole. So now what I do is I lift it up like this with the garment falling towards me and then very, very carefully trim the excess away. So those are my tips for some wonderful professional result techniques with sewing on your knits. The next thing I'm going to do is show you how you can fix your serger if one of those looper threads breaks without rethreading it from the beginning. So if a serger thread breaks, does that just ruin your day? Not anymore, once you learn the three things that I'm gonna teach you right now. My lower looper has broken. So instead of totally cutting all my threads and starting from the beginning and rethreading it, and you know that works, I know how to fix it. And these are the three steps. The very first thing you need to understand is that the needle threads wrap around the lower looper. So you have to get them not wrapping around the lower looper any longer. So that's the first thing I'm gonna do. If I raise my presser foot, that releases the tension discs. Then I can come in here. Okay, so here's needle thread, the left needle thread. And here's the right needle thread. All right. In all sergers, the upper looper is threaded and then the lower looper. It's like the sun comes before the grass. So the upper looper is threaded, it's laying further back. And now I've got my lower looper and it's, I pretend I've re-threaded it here. Now it just has to lay up and over the crook of the elbow of the upper looper. So I'm just gonna take this thread and bring it back here and be sure that it's in the crook of the elbow of the upper looper. And that the needle threads are coming directly from the eye of the needle back, not caught around anything else. So those needle threads are not going around the lower looper. And then I promise you, it's gonna work perfect. Gotta remember to put your presser foot down. And there you go. The needle threads will drag along the top for just a little bit, but then you can pull them out. Smile, there you have it. So really, ladies, the only things you have to remember is the needle threads have to come directly from the eye of the needle back, so raise your presser foot, release the pressure, get them pulled aside, and then refix upper looper first, then lower looper, and that lower looper thread has to lay right in the crook of the elbow of the upper looper. Remember those three things, and you'll just love your searcher even more.